Kat Ramirez, your host of Stand Out and Grow. I want to help your business stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. Building your business is really, really hard. And knowing what marketing and advertising tools you need to help you become successful is extremely confusing. After 30 years of working with thousands of businesses, I am here to help you make good business decisions. I want to help you understand the programs that are available to you so that you can stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. So let's get started. Hey there, this is Kat. And thank you for joining me in my live podcast. Today, I have a wonderful guest that I'm so excited to uh, introduce to you. Uh, But before we get started, if you are viewing me live, just drop me a comment and let me know where you're viewing from. I uh, love, 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 love uh, knowing where you guys are tuning in from. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to stop and um, learn something. And I promise you will learn something today, uh, sales related, uh, to help your business take it to the next level. Um, So let me uh, tell you who you're going to meet today. It's Tom, Tom Scabadetti. He's probably going to correct me. And I was repeating it over and over to get it right. (laughs) Um, And he, Tom is a sales trainer, mentor, and coach specializing in marketing, staff development, public speaking, business partner, uh, relationship development with an understanding and knowledge for product and brand marketing in the senior housing market, the recruitment and staffing, the customer support area, and all other uh, areas of training. He has had uh, hands-on experience in business networking and development of referral business partners. Tom's passion is to find the hidden essence in each person and help them develop it and create their personal success, which is a a good example of what a a coach or mentor should do and him being a a very good sales coach. So uh, without further ado, let me bring um, Tom on. So give me a second as I switch some banners here. Hmm. Okay, great. So welcome, Tom. Welcome. Uh, How are you doing today? I'm good, Kat. Thank you so much for that. It was a beautiful introduction. So awesome. Well, I'm, you know what? It's funny. And I'm just going to share this with everybody. I met Tom on uh, LinkedIn. So, you know, my big uh, push is to meet as many people as I can on LinkedIn. It's a great virtual network. And I was very fortunate to meet with Tom. And when I met with Tom, our dialogue just took off and um, we just connected dots. And I said, Tom, you got to be on my podcast because we clearly say the same thing. So Tom, um, just introduce yourself. Let us know a little bit about yourself so that anybody joining in can get a feel for who you are. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I um, have been in business more years than one account, but uh, I've actually worked in three different industries, and each one I've been either in management, uh, training, or sales and sales coaching. So uh, probably about 25 years of direct sales coaching and mentorship, uh, helping people grow their business, develop their skills, and just really uh, learn how to bring uh, a new concept in sales to people, which I really, build, I really believe in. So, Awesome. And um, so let's talk about that for a second, because you're really keen on this customer centric selling, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, as I said, I've, I have uh, sold and coached salespeople. And one thing I find is that most salespeople um, aren't really good about following up. And that's because they don't really build any kind of relationship with their customer. So when they try to call to see where the sale process is, they don't know what to say, except, hey, uh, Kat, are you ready to buy today? Uh, Have you made a decision? (laughs) So the idea of customer-centric selling, I actually developed this a number of years ago when I built a um, sales model for an insurance agency in Los Angeles. And it was geared towards um, high-end insurance sales. These people are paying, you know, 
tens of thousands of dollars for their insurance. So when I built this model, um, I decided not to go traditional. And my opening conversation with my customers was not, hey, you want to buy some insurance today? It was, what keeps you up at night? What are your problems? And when I found that when I dug deep into what their need or their want was, I could provide solutions that solved that, whether they're insurance or not. And that built this level of trust um, that I think is very important in any sales organization. So, Yeah. You know, you just brought back like tons of memories for me because um, I was a, a sales coach for 27 years in multi, you know, major media. And mm-hmm. I remember that that would be one key question that we would ask Hmm. for sure. Yeah, because I think the average customer, when they, I mean, sadly, salespeople have a bad reputation across (laughs) history, right? But when you, when you go into a sales relationship, the customer is already putting up their guards. I mean, the classic one, I use this a lot in my training. When you go into a car dealer, what's the first thing they say? Can I help you? And what do you say? I'm just looking. No one just goes to look at a car dealership. You go there for a reason. So it's that guard you put up. So I I believe in building this, what I call a buying experience versus a selling experience. I want to help you feel comfortable that we're going to go through a process. I'm going to explain the process, too. That's really important. Letting them know what it's going to look like. I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to ask you questions. And another thing that I I coach uh, very heavily is most salespeople, and again, I, I put myself in that role, too, start out ready to answer the comment with the next statement, the next feature, a benefit. They're ready to shoot it out there. So they listen to hear, but not to understand. Yep. And there's a huge difference there to understand what the customer said and and go a little deeper to really understand what they're trying to accomplish. Because otherwise, you know, then I'm just typical, just vomiting features and benefits, hope something sticks. And if I'm lucky and my price is right, I get the deal which to me isn't selling. That's, I don't know what that is. So. Yeah. And you're exactly right because, you know, uh, you said another key thing that I just did a podcast on um, was listening. If you listen very well, they're going to tell you a lot more than you think, but you have to learn to listen very well. Cause not, not everybody can listen and pick up clues. Right. Right. Well, and along that same line, I also <clears throat> believe that what the words people use are very powerful, too. If someone tells you that they're scared or they're frightened or they're nervous, that's a powerful word. And that means a lot to me to find out more instead of just, oh, OK, great. Well, let me talk about this product. And that's not how you sell. Selling should be a positive relationship that builds trust. Yep. And if you can do that, um, it pays you back tenfold. And that's sort of the core of this customer centric, there could be a time where my product isn't right for you. After we've had a conversation, it's not right. However, if I've built a, and this is a key element that I want to talk about later, if I build a good network of business partners I work with, I can bring in a solution that may be right for you. And all of a sudden, I bring this new level of value and relationship way beyond the other salesperson. It makes me much, much more valuable. And I may not get the sale today, but I'll get something out of it down the road, whether it's referral or just a positive, you know, review on, on a Yelp. Yeah. And so, okay, I, I'm going to share another situation with you because you just brought up another point and (laughs) this, this really is interesting on how it plays out and um, how well a salesperson really listens to their client. We had a a client call me and my um, account manager and the client said in a zoom call over and over she and you know and i always try to use these as coaching opportunities for my team but she said repeatedly i want you to tell me what to do she said it loud and clear okay Mm -hmm. she didn't you know wash it down she didn't like fumble around it straight up there (laughs) yes very candidly i want you to tell me what to do and um, and, th- and it was interesting because I wanted to see how the account manager played that out. Right. And the mm-hmm. account manager said, well, uh, once again, uh, client ABC, we have this option, this option, this option. And, uh, you know, clearly did not listen. Right. To mm-hmm. because 
the client wanted us to just say, well, okay, we're going to do option two because that's exactly right. what you want. And that's going to deliver exactly what you need. Right. right? Yep. It's, it's matching that solution. And, and I've used that same approach too. You know, from what you've told me and what I've heard, it sounds like this would be the best option. How does that sound to you? And so you're giving that guidance without pushing something. Yeah. And you're right. When they tell you that, that that's what they're asking for. They're asking you to yeah. do that. So you go, okay, well, I can do that. Yeah. Um, another but, way I've used, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, I've seen that happen a lot, though, where yeah. a client will say it in some way, form, or fashion. I want you to tell me what to do, right? In some form mm -hmm. or fashion. Maybe not as direct. Sometimes they walk around it. Whereas right. the person keeps selling and selling. Oh, and yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Stop I, already. I saw videos a bunch of years ago where this salesman was... The guy's writing the check, and he's still trying to sell on top of the guy writing the check. It's like, stop! Shut up! <laughs> he's right there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's nuts. I, um, another way I've used my customers um, in the same basis, and I say used in a positive way. Um, I will say, you know, um, can I ask you a really big favor? And they say, oh, sure. I say, you know, um, sometimes when I talk to other prospects. They're just not sure if this is right for them. And, and since you have experienced this, would you be willing to talk to them for me? I mean, they know I'm a salesperson, but if it comes from you, it's probably more believable. And it does two things. Number one, I've created now a, a endorsement from a true customer to another customer. Yep. But more importantly, I've made that customer feel very important that I ask them to do this for me. And again, yep. it's a great way of building that relationship. And, and you get that prospect who's not sure and they go, well, look, it creates this transparency. If I let you talk to someone who's experienced my sale, I'm pretty open about that. So you go ahead and talk to them. They'll tell you what good and the bad. And all of a sudden they go, well, okay, you must be honest because you wouldn't do that otherwise. So Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, And that's another uh, great example. Okay, so let's go through some of your uh, customer-centric selling. Okay. Um, key thing. So how is it different? Okay, so the, the, the key is starting out with the idea that I want to understand what the customer really wants. They may have answered an ad or saw a, 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 a on-site line, something to click, but tell me why you called. What's, what's the real need you have here? Because oftentimes they think they know what they want, but until you really do that deep explore or discovery, you don't know. So I, yep. want, to have a, I want to have a conversation where I ask you questions, and you ask me questions, and then once I pinpoint, I want to, I want to clarify. Uh, I, I love recapping in sales. So if I understand correctly, you need this because it will solve this problem. Is that correct? If they go, yes, I go, okay, great. We're on the right page. Now let's look at some options for that. And I always want to encourage my customers to feel they have control. Now, I say this completely honestly. I'm never going to lose control of the sale, but I want them to feel they're in control yep. because that way it takes that fear away. So I always say things like, well, I want you to make the right decision. I want to make sure this is right for you. Yep. And then we go through the options. And then, as you said in your example, if someone says, well, tell me what to do, I'll go, well, okay, I can't make the decision. But if I were in your shoes, here's what I would do. Yeah. So again, it's giving them permission to do that. So right. the customer centric says, once I identify what the goal is, I try and provide a solution. And that's where I have to sort of pre-build this network of professional uh, experts that are my business consultants. Um, again, I'll reference this insurance program I built. Um, since it was high net worth, I had a lot of uh, business partners that I connected with. I had someone who was an ex-FBI agent who did security and cybersecurity. I had an art dealer who did appraisals and, and I had a wine dealer who reviewed bottles of wine and gave valuations. I had a videographer, I was in LA at the time, a videographer who worked in the film industry who would videotape their collectibles and all their possessions. So when I'm talking to a customer and I found a need, I could just plug this person in and say, oh, well, here's a solution for you. And all of a sudden, my value just raised up and their comfort to work with me was much higher. So it's the ability to understand other needs your customer may have and have those resources available to you. Because in the end, you can give a referral to a business partner. Would they, would they be sad? A cat, if I gave you a referral, would you be sad with me? No. Of course not, right? You'd be excited. And so, <laughs> and, then, and then that quid pro quo would happen because um, 
Uh, I also I also teach a class on how to network. And when you build these relationships, you have to set ground rules with your business partners. Right. So you understand that if we're gonna, it's gonna give and take. I expect to give you business, and you can give me business. And if I have that relationship, then I'm comfortable to give referrals to you all day long because I know it'll come back to me tenfold. So, yes, that makes sense. Um, okay, so then I guess the other question would be, why does it work? Uh, I think it works because it changes your role. Um, I wrote this little white paper a couple of years ago when I was teaching uh, sales to a large um, real estate, you know, leasing, they lease apartments. And in life, you know, when you've, you've been in sales, you understand what they say is you want to be a trusted advisor. That's the goal. I'm a yep. trusted advisor. Well, I do too. But the reality is the first time I meet you as a customer, I can't be a trusted advisor. You don't even yeah. know me yet. What I, this article I wrote said, I'd rather be a guide. And you think about a guide. If you've ever been on any kind of a trip, what does a guide do for you? Well, first they get you where you're gonna go. That's, that's important. Uh, they entertain you along the way with stories or information and answer any questions you have. So I'd rather be the guide in the sales process to you. So let me guide you through it. I'm explain what it's gonna look like. Here's what's gonna happen. And then, we're going to come to a decision point. At that point, it'll be your decision, and I'll supply whatever information you need. So I've created this, this approach that says to the customer, I'm not selling anything. I'm just trying to help you make a decision, which right. takes, again, that pressure of being sold away because that buyer's remorse always creeps in after you've made a sale. You know, oh, did I do the right thing? Maybe I should have thought, you know, that I checked prices. And, and it also, another thing I, I believe very firmly in is value. I've never been a price seller in my entire career nice. because if I build value, the price doesn't matter. Uh, I think I may have told you the three companies that I own some very small stock holdings are Apple, Disney, and Starbucks. Because all three of those companies are not cheap, but they build value. And so yes. if I can build value as a salesperson, price isn't, is a piece of the discussion, but it's not the main discussion piece. Right. And that makes complete sense. Um, and there, I think there's a, a thing to that is, you know, when you're building value and when you're uh, creating that trust, you know, there mm -hmm. is a lot in play there in that you're not going to do that overnight. No, right. No. That is not going to happen overnight. And I think for a lot of um, salespeople and maybe newer ones, too, yep. is they don't understand that it takes 10 10 appointments or 10 calls, you know, a right. lot of time and it, 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 and this is a minutia of work, right? Because it takes mm -hmm. so many tries to get the one call right in front of that person. Right. And a lot of times it's not because that person is avoiding you or doesn't want to meet with you. Sometimes they're just busy. Period. Right. Yep. And, yeah. and, and if you give up, you've might've lost that one good yep. call, right? hundred percent. And as much as I, I hate to say it, sales is about numbers. It's a, it's a numbers game. So part of my goal in my coaching is to improve your conversion rate. Yeah. If I can reduce the number of appointments you need uh, or calls to get an appointment, that's helpful. Yep. If I can improve your skills so when you're in that appointment, you can move to the next step, that's helpful. So the higher conversion rate makes my life easier as a salesperson, but also it also puts more money in my pockets and making more sales too. Right, exactly. And then if a salesperson doesn't know what the conversion rate right now is, that's right. a problem. Oh, a huge problem, huge problem. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, I, I managed this insurance agency for a number of years and I had to actually build a matrix for these new salespeople because they're like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, let's play some golf and get some business. No, not gonna work that way. Here's what you're gonna do every week. This many appointments, this many yep. prospects, this many calls. Yep. You hit those numbers, you will hit your goals, but you gotta hit the numbers. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, and it, it to me, it's more of a minutia. The more strategic the, you, are, you are, the better at the game, right? right? It's like yep. a game of chess. The more that oh, you're, yeah. You're better at it. Um, if you don't put in the, the time and energy and the minutia, then you're really going to miss out and your sales cycle will be a lot slower and longer. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. very, very true. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I don't think you're going to share this, but maybe you will. So how do you impl implement the uh, customer-centric oh, selling? <laughs> well, actually, I, I, I will share I can, okay. a little preview. Um, <laughs> yeah, if it, people are, I do have uh, like, like five key tips to start the program off. So if people are interested, reach out to me. I'll share that with you. But the first one is really understanding that um, empathy is the first key in this, in this role. You have to have empathy for your customer. Understand the pain they're going through. Understand the situation. Uh, show them that you really care first <clears throat> rather than just trying to, to push this product. So you have to sort of reset your, your mindset to um, my goal is to provide solutions. I, you know, I, yep. That's what I do for a living. And if it, if it benefits me financially, that's great. If it doesn't, I've made the world a better place. So it's that empathetic approach in your mindset of going out there. To, and, and your customer will know if you're truly empathetic, they will feel that across the table, across the phone, and they'll realize it's a person they can talk to. Yeah, no, that makes total sense for sure. Um, yeah. So I guess give me your feedback in this because I've, I, I, I'm a little complex by this because okay. um, I come from the world of media, you know, of course, and I sold to business owners, okay? Never having been a mm -hmm. business owner, mm -hmm. it's hard to have empathy, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so how do you get well, around that? Well, I think um, we have this thing called the internet, which is really important. I use it a lot. <laughs> So when I first started in the business, I didn't have that, but um, I use it to research. So before I go to meet with a customer or if I'm looking at a job opportunity, I want to learn about that company. I want to understand who they are, what their mindset is. So if I find out that my prospect um, has a mission statement, they have uh, goals for their employees, this tells me a lot about the heart of that company. So now I can go in and I can share similar thoughts or even mention Hey, I was looking at your website. I'm really impressed you have those kind of, you know, principles. Those are great to build on. So now I'm talking about something that's important to you. Yep. Um, in um, my networking class I teach, um, I talk about common ground. Um, if I can find common ground with you outside of business, our relationship magnifies tenfold. Yep. If we like the same sports team, if we hate the same sports team, if we like the same kind of food, and we can talk about that, now our relationship is built on a different level than business, and it can transition over to, oh, well, this person must be okay because they like the same food I do. Let's talk about business. So, again, it's a research. Knowing, don't ever walk in blind to a customer. Learn about their, their business. You don't have to be the expert. I wouldn't walk into an electrical engineer and try and talk electronics. I know what their sales pitch is. Look at their marketing. You can learn so much from a website about a company, and that can give you some insight. And, and again, when you, when you tell them how much you enjoyed it, they feel good about the conversation because you, you've given them some positive feedback. Right. And that makes total sense. And that's great. And I'm glad you, that you said that and, and especially the emphasis on research, do your homework, because um, I think a lot of times I, um, and, and I feel this and see this a lot. OK, a mm -hmm. lot of times people want instant gratification. They want a, a landing page. They want a funnel. They, they think that right. these are going to convert on their own. And let me use a great example, especially clients with a high ticket, a high ticket mm -hmm. item. Yep. And, you know, I always use myself in in those shoes when I talk to a client who wants some kind of funnel on it to convert without any human contact. And I'm right. like, you know, put yourself in your your future client's shoes. Are you going to buy a five thousand dollar product without talking to someone? Right. No, you're not. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I absolutely. I think that that human uh, uh, nature is um, so important. Um, I have a mentor that I follow on LinkedIn. I'll give him a free plug. Marcus Sheridan, who is a, a great guy. Um, he built a successful business on this concept of they ask, you tell. So his website is very open and transparent. And I think that key is a key that. I should be able to go to get information. I shouldn't feel like I have to talk to somebody right away, but when I have questions, that'd be available to me. So yes. it lets me have that control on there. So um, sharing information is good because you should not be afraid of your information. I shouldn't be afraid to tell you what I do or how it works or what the cost is. If I'm afraid of it, I don't believe in it. And that comes across real clearly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that's and that's a great comment to make. Uh, okay. Um, 
So anything else we should know about the customer centric selling that I haven't asked you about? Um, I think that the, the key is you have to have this network of business partners that you work with uh, in business in general, whether it's customers or selling. I should have people that I can rely on and trust. And uh, I belong to quite a few of these paid networking groups. Um, I have nothing against them personally. I just think you can create your own much, much more efficiently. So I would recommend if you're starting your business, go find three or four people who sell similar services to your client base yep. and have a have a monthly meeting with them. Uh, and, you know, we're out of COVID, so have lunch with them and just chat. That will create a much stronger network of similar resources to help you and help them. And then you can say, well, great, I'm going to go meet with Kat next week. And she's looking for this. Do you have any product that might fit her needs? Because then when I'm talking to you, I also can plug in this other. And so, again, my, my value as a salesperson raised up because I'm not bringing in one solution. I'm bringing in multiple solutions. And they may even, they may even link together and work well. Yeah. So. That is some great advice. I love that, Tom. That, okay. That's very okay. good advice. Yeah, I well, hope that. You. Yeah, I hope anybody tuning in uh, really takes advantage of that advice because that to me uh, is a great takeaway. Uh, and it's something that you can do on your own, you know, right, again, right. Yep. you're going to find those people and do that on your own, um, which is great. And it's free. You're not paying for it. You're not, you know. Right. Because so. yeah, those groups, um, I actually was involved with one where I was a director. And the only challenge of those groups is they have this expectation that you will give referrals. Yeah. And we can't always do that. So if I can yep. keep it on a more casual basis where it's more shared thinking, yep. I think it's more valuable to you. Oh, yeah. I, and sometimes in those situations where you're expected to bring in a referral that bring, creates more anxiety and less right. likely to participate because you're like, I yep. don't have anybody to bring, so I'm going to miss it. You know, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so, perfect. okay, perfect. Okay. And then, um, so for, so how do people get a hold of you as we wind down and wrap this up? How okay. do people get a hold of you? Well, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm the only scab ready on there, so you can pretty much find me. Okay. And uh, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect. I'm, I'm a lot like you, Kat. I try and build as many connections as I have. Um, I'm just over 3,200 right now. I'm looking to get to 5,000 if I can, because uh, I, I don't, I don't do it just to connect with people. Because now I have these resources I can connect other people with. I, yep. I believe that the key to LinkedIn is being the connector, yep. and bringing people together. So reach out on LinkedIn for me. Um, I can uh, share my email address if people want. And you're welcome to reach out to me directly. And if you do reach out, I will give you uh, a, uh, what I call a tip sheet on how to start your customer-centric selling. And if you want to engage further, then we can have a conversation. I'm happy to provide any resource, whether it's coaching, mentoring, uh, just even uh, I will give a free assessment of your sales process for you and tell you what I think, uh, whether it's a good one or a bad one. So. Yeah, and that's fantastic. And that is a great takeaway for anybody that is tuning in. And then um, before we, um, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? No, uh, just, okay. uh, you know, I'm, I'm always willing to help people and, and it doesn't always have to be uh, on a business relationship. I'm just here to help people grow, so. Right, I, and you know what, I'm glad you said that because, you know, too many times I I personally seek out mentors even if it's for a quick question you know right. it's not for anything more than hey i just like to ask you this i see that you're in the same area i'm in and i'm trying to do right. this and you know can i ask you a quick question a lot of times i love it if they they say you know sure give me a call cat i'm happy to answer yeah. your question you know yeah i think i think we have to we've got you know we've got to give back in this world we've gone through too many crazy years of <laughs> of of bad time. So helping somebody is always a good thing. Oh, no, absolutely. It's got to yeah. pay it forward. Uh, okay. Any words of advice for anybody tuning in as we wind this down and wrap this up? I, I think uh, just a couple of things as a business owner. Um, number one, know your market. Understand who your market is, who your client is, and take a deep look at your customer, uh, at your customer base and your product. Are you selling to the right people or do you need to modify your, your approach? And then secondly, um, 
go out there with an open open eyes and open heart with your prospects. Uh, the more you become vulnerable to them, they'll see you're a real person and they'll probably connect with you more than that slick, sassy salesperson, you know, wham, bam. That's that's not selling to me. I'm not even sure what that's called. So Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Those are great words of advice. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, and, and again, if you are tuning in now, um, please hit replay and watch from the beginning because this is all about uh, customer centric selling, um, which is really different from your typical um, hardcore sell Um or a, a pressure sell. And there are lots of different ways to sell. And and again, this is really based on your personality. Um, but if you're having a tough time at it, this is probably a great one to test and use because it is a little more endearing. It's a little more um, relating to your client and, li and listening, mm -hmm. you know, really listening. Um, thank you so much, Tom, for joining me today. I really appreciate that. Oh, Kat, thank you for this forum. I, I, I love what you do, and I really appreciate a chance to chat with you. And, and, you know, I'm always here to help whatever you need. So, Okay, great. And if I don't talk to you um, before the Christmas holidays, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry <laughs> Christmas to you, too. Have a happy holiday. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in uh, to my episode today for Stand Out and Grow. Um, if you, again, if you're just now catching it, please hit rewind and catch it from the beginning. Um, this uh, episode is really based on uh, the customer-centric selling, which is a great way to test and try um, if you're not having any success in closing or selling. Um, give it a go and connect with Tom on LinkedIn. Uh, if you watch the video, you'll see, and uh, I'll put his links below in all of the comments so that you can connect to him. Until next time, as I always end this, you got this. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Stand Out and Grow. Check out all the notes and links at www.standoutandgrow.com. I am so thankful to you for helping this show continue to grow. I want to keep producing content that you want to hear, so please leave me some feedback. I look forward to bringing you more resources and information to help your business stand out and grow. Please follow us on social media and make sure you follow this podcast so you can learn more about helping your business stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. Until next time, you got this. Advertise helps businesses stand out and grow with affordable advertising options. We will help you make good business decisions so you can save money and not just throw it against the wall to see if it sticks. Get your free strategic advertising analysis today so you can see the opportunities to stand out and grow your business. Visit www.standoutandgrow.com offers page to learn more.